Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about Revenge of the Nerds. Specifically, I'm doing a 90s kid review of the 1984 film Revenge of the Nerds. So first and foremost, when watching the movie, which I had never seen before, um, it's on Hulu right now, in case you want to watch it, um, my first thought was, what exactly is a nerd in the 80s? So, like, I would consider myself a nerd by today's standards, but in terms of what a nerd was in the 80s, I really wasn't sure because I'd always thought it was going to be, like, the main characters, Lewis Gilbert and also, like, Poindexter. Those were the, what I thought, stereotypically, what would be labeled as a nerd of the time. Uh, sorry, this is reflecting. Um, and... But then you have, uh, like, Booger. He's like the kid from the Monster Squad, all grown up. He's awesome. I love Curtis Armstrong. But you also have, like, Lamar. Like, what makes him a nerd? Because he's gay? That doesn't make any sense. And Katashi, uh, what makes him a nerd? Because he doesn't speak English that well? I, like, I really wasn't getting what exactly constituted a nerd. And then by... I'm assuming it's just some, anyone who's like a misfit is a nerd, but then shouldn't it be called Revenge of the Misfits? Or I thought the Spanish title was good, Revenge of the Freshmen. And if it's Revenge of the Misfits, like why isn't Ogre a nerd? Like it seems like he would be. Uh, so that was essentially my first impression. Well, that was my impression throughout the movie. Like my first real impression was all these dudes look like they're 30. Fun fact, most of them were in their late 20s or early 30s. Uh, except for the, you know, the guy who plays Gilbert, I think he was like 22, but most of them were in their 30s, which is crazy, because they look like teachers. Um, and I gotta say, I didn't know John Goodman was in there, and I was pleasantly surprised. I did know Curtis Armstrong as Booger, I've seen that referenced and parodied, and I know the musical number at the end, which has also been parodied quite a lot. So there's certain things I I just, I knew in like in the zeitgeist of culture about the film, but I had never seen the film and there were a lot of things I was really surprised about. Uh, so if you haven't seen the film like me, I'll just kind of explain it briefly. So there's this fraternity, the Alpha Betas, and they're like a very stereotypical film version of a fraternity. And honestly, I didn't really understand why they were all on the football team. I've never seen a, a fraternity like that that but okay um but i would say they're the shenanigans level yeah I, i've met i mean i knew guys in fraternities that's all i'm gonna say um oh my gosh i i worked for a fraternity you know what we won't get into it um i'll talk about it when i talk about the sororities okay so um all these freshman guys get uh kicked out of their dorm when the fraternity uh the alphabet has burned down their house during a party and throughout the whole the film, it seems like they do like some not really good things and some straight up illegal things, which I'll talk about later. And they don't get in trouble for anything, which, I mean, this film should just be privilege, the movie. Because uh, it seems like they really, even at the end, they don't fully get a comeuppance. I know there's a second and third one. I haven't seen those yet, but I do have them queued up to watch after this. But I wanted to do this review before getting into them. Um, so after they get kicked out... Um, all of the freshman boys or young men uh, go to a basketball court and they have like a, they sleep on cots there until they can join fraternities or find another place to live. And so you get down to the last few guys and they end up getting a house together, but they're still being bullied by the fraternity and the fraternity throws a rock through their window. And so they go to the police and the police said they can't do anything, which I'm pretty sure breaking a window purposefully um, to cause harm is at vandalism or criminal mischief, which are very much against the law. Um, and a police can do something about it. Um, although maybe it wasn't against the law in the 80s, but I'm pretty sure it was. But I'll get into some other things I knew they uh, did that definitely were against the law. Um... <laughs> So anyway, the uh, the nerds end up uh, joining a fraternity, the Landa Landa Landas, um, and I'm pretty sure they did that because the signia for the Lambda looks like the reverse Star Trek symbol. I'm just saying, I think that's real. Um, but I don't, I don't know, I don't really understand why they needed to join a fraternity when it seems like the um, the dean of the school probably could have just implemented some punishment on the fraternity without them having to join it but whatever okay um so then the fraternity comes in and they they do put in that like a stake and they have the words nerd on fire in their front yard it seems throughout this film like they're using the bullying of the nerds as an allegory for racism 
and maybe they shouldn't have. Anyway, um, that uh, setting something on fire is uh, definitely arson, and doing, I mean, it's, what they did was definitely illegal, and there was definitely criminal action, or, uh, law, yeah, law enforcement could have done something about that, and again, it's just, oh god, so privileged, that whole fraternity council, which just bothers someone every level, I'm watching it, just, like, gritting my teeth, I'm like, I hate that guy, but the dude who plays Stan, that actor, he, side note, has a phenomenal hair. Like, his hair is so nice. Ah, oh, envy. And also on another side note, is Point Dexter okay? Like, he's legally blind, right? And he doesn't actually speak throughout the film. What? Real note, guys. Real talk. Does he need help? Like, I feel like maybe someone should have been helping him. What kind of friends are these? Okay, good sidebar. Um, like I said, I know the musical at the end, but there are some shenanigans. The nerds weren't innocent, and this is what I wanted to get into, which I found very bothersome. Um, there are some huge issues. Those little voyeur perverts <sighs> very much break the law in like the worst kind of way. They were they were worse than the alpha betas. So they broke into the sorority girls. I didn't even I didn't even get the name of their sorority. They they broke into the sorority house, and uh, they put in cameras so they could watch them, and particularly watch them in the nude without the permission. Um, that's very illegal, very very illegal, even in the eighties. Further, they were selling pictures of the one girl. Uh, I think her name was Betty Child. Um, I hope her name wasn't Betty Child. I hope I got that wrong. Um, so they're selling um, pictures of her nude on pie tins with just whipped cream on them to help them win a charity event. Um, yeah, she definitely give her, didn't give her consent to have her picture taken or to have the image of her recreated or sold. That is, again, very illegal and absolutely not okay in any way, shape, or form. And then lastly, Lewis masquerades as Stan. So Stan's her boyfriend. And he goes into her room because it's a cost they're in costumes. So they go... And he catches up with her, and they end up having a sexual encounter while he's in the costume masquerading as her boyfriend. That is straight-up sexual assault, and absolutely not okay. This movie is a horror movie, but and I don't like that she's totally okay with it just because he was good in bed, I guess. Although they're... Okay. Ugh. With all that having been said, though, uh, and there's a lot in that, um... So, I did find the sorority girls were actually depicted pretty fairly. <laughs> that sounds mean, but like, oh my gosh, sorority girls. So, when I went to university, there were two major sororities, and they were... Hey, future me here. While editing, I realized I went on this crazy diatribe about sororities ending with, you can't take off duct tape with plenty nubs. <laughs> Which is true. Um, so suffice it to say, I do have kind of a negative bias towards sororities, and essentially, I just wanted to kind of communicate that sororities are can be just as bad and even worse than fraternities. And fraternities are horrible. Like this one time on the sidewalk, there was all this crazy stuff, and then <sighs> future future me here, realizing my hair is crazy and I'm just gonna go with it, but I have a lot of animosity towards Greek life, which is funny as I am actually a member of two honor societies, which are very different from sororities and fraternities, but I'm a member of uh, Beta Gamma Sigma and Pi Beta Pi, um, which are very different from frats and sororities, but I just, uh, I, I can't get into the conversation about them without going off a horribly negative tangent, so I'm gonna stop <laughs> while I'm behind, edit all that out, and get back to the interview, which I hope you're enjoying. No more future me's. <laughs> Thanks. With nubs. <sighs> okay, so basically the movie, it is funny. I was watching the movie laughing most of the time, mostly at John Goodman's character. Like, he has this great line, was, uh, beep, we forgot to practice, which was my favorite when um and then the um everything curtis armstrong did was as booger was fantastic um i did like point dexter i did like the friendship between lewis and gilbert i thought it was kind of endearing um despite the fact that per like 
Lewis is a pervert and Gilbert's just like this sweet guy. Um, I know in the next one he's in it for a few minutes and then he's not in the rest of them. Um, the films are pretty much led by Lewis. I don't like that. I hope Betty breaks up with him, if that's her name, because he, yeah, he's a terrible person. Um, so anyway, that was my 90s kid anal uh, analyzing, um, The Revenge of the Nerds. So basically, it doesn't hold up for modern audiences. And, uh, I'm gonna go watch the second and third one and hope that they're improved. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye.